Hi, I'm Steve Sewell, and I'm going to talk to you today about the personalization paradox and particularly how you can solve it. So just briefly about me, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Builder.io, and previously I led web engineering at ShopStyle.com. ShopStyle, we brought Headless all the way in 2014. We were very early into the Headless commerce bandwagon, and we learned a lot, a lot of which I'm going to talk to you about today. So let's talk about a common story. Let's go Headless. It scales better. It performs better. Our developers can move at a better velocity, and there's so many clear upsides to conversions, to the ability to continue to grow our business, etc. So we build out the new website, and it's fast. Wow, we did a great job. We made an incredibly fast website, and now the hard part comes. So we did the important task of speeding up the website. Conversions should increase, balance should decrease, time on site could increase. But e-commerce businesses are very marketing-oriented businesses. And we're going to need to start adding some layers here to make sure the marketing team can optimize the content of the website to make sure visitors are converting. So we need some tools. So we start layering on some tools in the browser, add a little JavaScript to do some A-B testing via some content injections, add a little JavaScript to run some pop-ups, add some JavaScript to do some landing page building, add some JavaScript for some personalization, uh, add some JavaScript for some heat map tracking, add some JavaScript for some promotions. And you can probably see where this is going. We just shot ourselves in the foot. We just added so much additional functionality in JavaScript into the browser, into the client directly, that we incrementally just completely landed in this paradox of in trying to increase conversions, we've significantly decreased them because we've actually made the website extremely slow and clunky, which is completely the polar opposite of our goal here. So the question is, how can you have all of this functionality but not pay the price, not end up back where you started in terms of poor performance of your website? Traditionally, these things do feel like a teeter-totter. You either have a fast website or you have the tools to test, experiment, and personalize content to make sure that it converts well. But we don't want this to be a linear thing. We want to actually solve the core root of the problems so we can deliver a fast website, but we can personalize the content, we can experiment with content. The Every team member can jump in and be finding what's gonna cause our visitors to convert without having to wait for these slow development cycles or load up with these very clunky and very poor performing tools into the client, into the browser. So at the end of the day, what makes a website fast is delivering optimized HTML from the edge as quickly as possible, right? That HTML has to have compressed images, as little JavaScript as possible, and it needs to come from a very geographically close area to the visitor. So you just get slammed with fast HTML immediately and can start interacting with the page immediately. But we need that HTML coming from the edge to be personalized. We need to give all of our team members the ability to run tests, to experiment, to find what's going to convert a given audience and to segment them down to show more relevant content to relevant shoppers, right? If you're uh, traditionally shop the menswear collections, let's show more menswear. If you shop womenswear, womenswear, footwear, etc. right? All these basic tests we can run need to be in the hands of our non-development teams because hard coding all of this doesn't really work well either. And so now edge functions are here to the rescue, right? We now have the ability to serve dynamic content, to manipulate content, to rewrite content at the edge. So now we can serve unique content on a per visitor basis if we need to directly from the edge with edge functions with Netlify, which is amazing for e-commerce. It's extremely simple to integrate with. You can write just a little bit of code and you can use third-party libraries inside of this. And now you can change the response on a per visitor basis with lightning speed. Now, the way this can work with modern Jamstack frameworks is just doing simple URL rewrites. So essentially the workflow that we've seen work really well is at the edge, look at things like cookies to segment your audiences and add those segments, the relevant ones, to the path. So instead of going to just the home page, the slash page, let's go to slash and add a query param or a delimiter and add a few key value pairs. We know this is a return user. We know that they have a certain amount of products in their cart. We know a few other things about them. Let's put that in the URL directly using a rewrite at the edge. So now we're making a different page for this visitor as some of our other visitors, so it's not everyone seeing the same content. Now, at the edge, if that rewrite causes a cache hit, fantastic. We will serve content immediately and we will reuse any content generated for anybody with the same attributes over and over for extreme performance. On the rare case we get a cache miss, we can fall back to server-side rendering or incremental static regeneration 
to then form the optimal page for that that visitor for that combination of these sort of attributes. So then we go back to the server and we now have all of those attributes in the path or as query param, something that our server side or static generation that's done on demand can read. And then we send all those attributes to various platforms and services. So one example would be builder.io. When you say, give me the content for this page, we're gonna forward those attributes and then builder will return the best match. If somebody in builder has click, click, click configured that we've got a different homepage for return users or a different homepage for menswear shoppers then you will see a tailored version that your non-development teams have created that will then go up into the edge cache and served. And generally we'd recommend using incremental static uh, regeneration as well as stale while we validate caching. Meaning now anybody who matches those user attributes will get the immediate response and we will fetch the updated versions in the background at a time that you specify. So everyone gets a fast response yet data is quite fresh and it's refreshed regularly. Now you're probably wondering, how does this work with a code base? Well, in the case of Builder, you define regions and you basically sort of segment out your website and say, do the engineers control this? Is this the complicated product details? Is this the complicated product grid? Those should be right there soldered onto your code base, you know, built in as components directly. And then other areas that the marketing teams, merchandisers, non-development teams should be regularly managing and experimenting with, those should be sectioned off as areas that they have control over. Now with Builder, in the case of us, you can decide that your design system of components is required to use, drag and drop with those areas and within the regions and these sort of uh, controls that your developers put into place. Common patterns are usually you might want to have your uh, business teams control everything between the header and footer of your homepage, maybe certain regions of the product page, like we can experiment with editorializing you know, our pages about our footwear and the materials and sort of the, let's see what are the sort of uh, levers that cause people to be motivated to buy these as opposed to other products. Collection pages, navigation with CMS data, blog posts, landing pages are all very, very common use cases for this. And this works a lot like any other CMS integration. You fetch data using your framework standards and you render data instead of in a hard-coded layout, you just render it with a rendering component. So our builder component, you pass in the data, which is just JSON that basically describes, put your hero here with these props and put your columns here with these props. You can register your components to be those building blocks that your non-development teams build with. So really at the end of the day, this looks and operates just like a typical headless CMS would without having to hard code page layouts, which can be really great for component driven development, making sure that you don't think of your website as a bunch of pages where you hard code every detail of it and make these complicated CMS forms to manage. Instead, you make a design system of components. The components are the Lego blocks that you pass to your business team members, and they can go and create different pages and sections of pages with those. But that adds the additional sort of benefit of if you want to use personalization, if you want to use experimentation, you need to hand off the same pieces, the design systems, the React components, whatever it is, to those team members. That way, everything is high performant, it's rendered statically, it's using your design system, it's using your image optimization, all of those things you've already done, but engineers don't have to hard code these layouts and it can give the business users the ability to stay within the bowling lanes that you want, but to be able to run A-B tests, to schedule content in advance, to give personalized variations with all of those benefits. This is effectively just server-driven UIs, which is something that's been popularized by some other companies um, as an amazing way to optimize what end users see while keeping a great developer experience that's very component driven. And you just hand off the general layout, the general scaffold of what page content should be seen by who to an API. And that's it. Using the combination of edge functions, an API driven layout management system like Builder with things like built-in A-B testing and personalization, you can have a real solution to the personalization paradox. You can have a perfect performing website that's delivering dynamic content to on a per user basis. You can allow your non-development teams to rapidly experiment with who should see what content and keep it all high performance, native to your tech stack, API driven and composable, and always, always meeting the developer's requirements. So if you wanna learn more about us, check out builder.io. You can find us on Twitter at at builder.io or uh, you can find me at eight steve, eight, steve8708. And uh, we've got some examples of using Builder with Netlify Edge functions, and it's pretty amazing. I'd love to see what you build with it. Thank you for watching.